Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to Cricket Happenings and uh, we are looking at two games here. Uh, one is the match between New Zealand and Australia which was uh, yesterday was the third day and uh, Australia went on to take a very good lead uh, thanks to Michael Clarke uh, getting on to his century and this was his uh, first century in Australia after becoming the captain of Australia. Uh, he contributed 139 runs with 19 fours and 1 six. His driving was absolutely exemplary. He was punching the ball on both the offside and the onside, and he was not even afraid to. Uh, one of the shots that he played of Martin was a real side. He just, you know, he just slapped Martin into the fence. Uh, in fact, Martin was the best bowler yesterday. Uh, he bowled in the right areas and and had figures of 28 overs, five maidens, 89 runs and three wickets. Uh, but uh, in fact, Michael Clark and uh, Ricky Ponting started, but Ricky Ponting. Uh, well, he couldn't get his century. Probably one was waiting for a test match century for Ponting after two years. But was, that was not to happen. It's uh, Ricky Ponting trying to play his favorite shot. Like trying to, uh, you know, uh, I mean, this has been a feature of Ponting. Ponting has been uh, claimed by the bowlers when he was been ac actually been playing across the line. Today, he tried once again to play across the line. Paid the penalty as uh, Chris Martin got the ball to swerve in. And he was LBW bowled Martin for 78 with 12 four. So that is the first wicket to go. 177 for who Hussey, um, um, Hussey uh, left very very cheaply for just 15 runs with two fours when he was caught by Ryder uh, at the forward shot leg of the bowling of Vettori for 15 and that made the score uh, 237 for 5 and in walked uh, Brad Haddon and Brad Haddon um, really took his time at the crease uh, was really really uh, uh, I would say he was uh, basically uh, you know, playing uh, the waiting role, and Michael Clark was the one who was playing the strokes. But Brad Haddon took his time at the crease, and then slowly started flowering. And we saw those uh, strokes of Brad Haddon that he plays. As you know, he's a very uh, good player, straight down the ground, and that's what he did. He was playing very straight, and one of the strokes he hit was absolutely imperious. He just, you know, punished uh, one of the ballers uh, by hitting him imperiously uh, through the fence. And after that, he also hit some good two two sixes. And uh, he was looking good, and that was the partnership which enabled Australia to get to a score of 427. Uh, whereby this partnership, uh, which went on from uh, 237 to 345, so the 108 run partnership, and uh, both of them uh, really, uh, you know, as I said, uh, they played well. And uh, Brand Haddon also looked confident finally, but Michael Clark was then uh, dismissed as Martin, as I said, was the best bowler today. He took his wicket when Clark was caught. Saudi bowl Martin for 139 with 19 fours and 1 six. Brand Haddon contributed 80 with 6 fours and 2 six, becoming a victim of Martin Guptill. Uh, other than that, uh, the, the tail was just washed out, but uh, there was uh, Mitchell Stark on debut. Uh, put up an impressive show there uh, with the bat to not out on 32 or 54 balls with 3 fours when Australia were all out for 427. Siddle was caught tailor bowl with Tory for a drug. Pattinson gave his wicket to Bracewell for 12 with 1-4 and Nathan Lyon fell to Saudi. Uh, Mitchell Stark uh, also played some good strokes. He showed some good defensive technique there and he was not out on 32 uh, when Australia were all out for 4.27. The best bowler, Chris Martin, 28 overs, 5 minutes, 89 runs, 3 wickets. Tim Saudi, 28.2 overs, 5 minutes, 103 runs and 2 wickets. Daniel Vettori, toiled hard, 37-13, 88-2. And Doug Bracewell, 26-3, 1 for 104 to show for his efforts there. As you know, Bracewell has been pretty, pretty unlucky not to get the wicket of Michael Clark because there were some chances which went down once again. Martin Guptill, 3 overs, 1 for 18, 3 overs for 11 for Brownlee, and Williamson bowled 4 overs for 8 runs. And uh, so that gave them a very handy lead. In fact, uh, 295 was, was what New Zealand made, so 427. So it was uh, uh, basically it's 132 run lead that they got, and New Zealand. In fact, uh, um, batting in the second innings lost Brendan McCullum very early as he was edged into the slips so of the bowling of Pattinson for one. And finally, it left Martin Guptill not out on seven at close with, um, with uh, the night watchman Doug Bracewell not out on not. Ten for one New Zealand, another 122 runs needed uh, to actually take the lead there. Uh, Pattinson four overs, three minutes, one runs and one wicket and Peter Cyril three overs for eight runs. Uh, looks like uh, we are going to the fourth end. Certainly, it looks like uh, a result match here. Now, New Zealand has to wipe off the 122 runs in the morrow uh, and then start uh, afresh. Uh, now, uh, there's not nothing much happening in the pitch uh, as such, but uh, we look forward to a good day's play 
uh, in the fourth day here at the Brisbane Cricket Ground at the Woolen Gaba in Brisbane. So that is as far as this match is concerned. Uh, the other match uh, that I would like to talk about is the match which has just ended, uh, which is the second One Day International, which has once again gone in favour of Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan put up a good show, uh, batting first, uh, raising 262 uh, in their effort there. Uh, and uh, Bangladesh uh, put up a good effort. Uh, Nasir Hussain was the uh, feature of this Bangladesh innings. Uh, he went on to score his maiden century, uh, only getting some support from Shakib Lassan, uh, who made 34. Other than that, Bangladesh really struggled uh, against the target of 262. They lost uh, early wickets, Mohamed Afiz and uh, Umar Gul uh, coming in and uh, picking up the wickets. And that left uh, Bangladesh very precariously placed at 19 for 4. The only support that they got was from, uh, as I said, Shakib al Hassan, who contributed 34, Nasir Hussain uh, going on to make his maiden century and look, to, uh, look like a very, very promising player for the future. Uh, because what he does is he has been, uh, he has not been, he has been getting some good knocks uh, and he was the highest scorer in uh, the first one day international. In the test match also, he played well. So it looked like Nasir Hussain is really, really uh, developing as an all rounder for Bangladesh. And today he flowered, and uh, that would really give him lots of confidence now. Uh, probably, uh, you know, get, get, getting himself to be playing for Bangladesh on a permanent level because a century against Pakistan is something that um, any any batsman will be proud of. And looking at the uh, bowling uh, that Pakistan has, I thought um, Nasir Hussain really played well. He played some good strokes too. In, fa in fact, he took his time at the crease. Uh, you know, the run rate was really steadily increasing, but that didn't really matter. As far as Pakistan were concerned, uh, Pakistan uh, went on to 262 for 3, uh, 32 coming from Mohamed Afiz at the top of the order, 56 balls with 6 fours. Uh, Yunus Khan and Misbaola contributing 37 apiece, uh, 37 of 70 balls for Yunus Khan, 3 fours. Misbaola, uh, very sedate, 37 of 55 balls uh, with 1 four. Other than that, Umar Akmal and uh, Shai the Freedi were the ones who really gave the impetus to the innings, with um, uh, Umar Akmal going on to make 59 of 54 balls with 5 fours and 1 six. Shai the Freedi, a hard hitting 42 of 27 balls, uh, three fours and two sixes uh, was the, and then, uh, and this was what enabled uh, Pakistan uh, to reach a score of uh, 262 for seven in their 50 overs, uh, which, uh, and as I said, Bangladesh uh, couldn't really match it other than Nasir Hussain uh, celebrating his maiden ODI century. There was not much, in, not much really to talk about as far as the Bangladesh innings were concerned. Uh, the uh, Bangladesh bowling figures, 2 for 50 for Shafiul Islam. Shakib Hassan stood out with his bowling. 10 overs no maiden, 1 for 27 for Shakib Hassan bowled very well. Uh, Abdul Razak, 1 for 58. 7 overs, 1 for 46 for Elias Sunny. Uh, 3 overs for 18 for Nasir Hussain. Rubel Hussain, 10 overs, 2 for 58. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, as I said, it was all Nasir Hussain uh, making 100 of 134 balls, 11 fours and 1 six. Shakib Hassan contributing 34 of 90 balls with 1 four. Other than that, the top order uh, could uh, contribute only 18 runs between them. As I said, they were 19 for four at one stage, thanks to Mohamed Afiz and Umar Gul. And uh, also, one should blame uh, uh, Tami Mikbal for playing such a atrocious shot. Uh, the ball that Umar Gul bowled uh, could have been called a wide, but he went after that and he paid the penalty as Umar Gul actually took his wicket. Uh, so that was uh, something that uh, Tami Mikbal needs to really look into. Uh, other than that, as I said, uh, it was uh, easy pickings for uh, Pakistan and Pakistan have gone 2-0 uh, up uh, in the one-day series now. Uh, they are looking very hungry, I would say. And uh, Bangladesh, as I said, uh, was uh, no match today. Uh, they, they, they tried their bit through Saki Basan and uh, Nasir Hussain, but uh, those efforts were not enough. Uh, other than that, four wickets for Umar Gul uh, and the other ball was chipped in. Well, unfortunately, dear fans, uh, due to some YouTube trouble, I'll have to end up my cricket show. Hope you all enjoyed my cricket show. Thanks for watching Cricket Happenings. Your host, Ram, signing off. Thank you.